So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you all about how to get super, super organized in your business by organizing your folder and file hierarchy and general organization. Now, this might be one of those videos that you think actually you don't need to watch. You know how to obviously save your files and your documentation and you might have some sort of semi-organized status going on already. But I just wanted to walk you through this process today because if you're a small business owner, the chances are at some point you wanna be more than just a one person entity, you're gonna to wanna to have your own team and therefore when that moment in time comes it would be really nice for you to just naturally progress and involve without having to re sort of design your whole IT infrastructure and how you work so with that in mind this video today is going to walk you through some basic file and folder management for a small organization who like me is working as a one person business that's evolving into a small team and that offers professional services to their clients. Okay, so my name's Angela McCall. This is McCall Media TV, a small YouTube channel dedicated to helping people like you conquer their online digital marketing efforts and to basically embrace today's technology. So if you haven't been here before, please click on the subscribe button and that bell to stay notified to when I publish other videos. If you've got any questions or queries, put them in the comments below the video and I will dive in and answer them um, pretty much on a daily basis, to be honest with you. So let's crack straight on. So on my left hand monitor what I've got here is a little mind map thing going on just to sort of break down and sort of demonstrate this process to you to go today okay so when it says folder organization here what I'm talking about is the equivalent of Dropbox OneDrive Google Drive whichever cloud-based sort of document management storage system that you currently use. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that at the moment as a one person business, you're probably operating in a sense that you'll have a client folder and you put the client contracts in there, you put their project files in there and everything sort of lives in one place, which is fine while it's just you. But the moment you want to grow as a business, you're not gonna want your team to access things like the client contracts. So you're gonna to need to start thinking about how to segment your business out. And the easiest way to get your mind in the game is to actually start thinking as a business owner when you're working on the business and all the different departments that you need to manage and organize as well as the service delivery itself when you're working in the business. So this is basically the concept that I've adopted on screen here. So the three key areas of your main storage environment at the moment needs to be split into your business. So that's basically like you as the senior management team talking to your department heads as it were. Then you've got the clients, the folders themselves that you deliver the products and services that you are known for. And then you keep you completely out of the environment of your business. If you are gonna store your personal files and things in this situation, then you need to keep yourself a nice separate personal folder. Okay, and then in a minute at the end of the video, we're gonna look at some naming conventions for your files. So let's quickly dive on over here to working on our business and actually thinking about the business itself. So the first thing that we need to think about is actually the different areas of our business. So we've got like the actual operational side of things, which if we look at that, basically is sort of organized on a year by year basis. So you've got this year, you're gonna have business plans, you're gonna have maybe a company hierarchy in the future that you need to think about. You're definitely gonna have certificates and policies, things like your VAT certificate, your company's house and corporation documents, more than likely your business insurance documents right from word go. You're gonna to wanna to set your company's quarterly KPIs and performance so that you can track how you're progressing from this year to next year and how you can move that business forward and sort of look at your own analytics and statistics. And you might also have something called like an approved suppliers list. This may be questionable about where you wanna store this information here under your business operations or maybe down here in the production. But at the moment for me, this is how I've stored mine. So this information is probably gonna be something that's gonna be rinsed and repeated every year. As your business grows, it's gonna get a little bit more in depth. So the easiest way to manage where you are at the moment is to start working on a year by year basis. Following on from that, you are gonna then have your various legal documents. Now, this is quite in depth because I wanted to give you some example of things that you might need to include and store here. Cause you might be thinking, I'm a one person business. Why do I need a legal department? Well, you're gonna have term, terms and conditions of your website. Chances are you're probably gonna need to update them as your way of trading and doing business and that kind of thing. So you're gonna need to save like a version one, a version two, a version three as time goes on. 
You're then gonna have your GDPR privacy policies. The moment you start collecting data or putting cookies on people's websites or on people's computers to do with your website performance, you're gonna to need to have a privacy policy in place. You might also be working with other businesses. You might be looking at joint venture agreements. And then a lot of this stuff down here is a lot more sort of mundane and dis, uh, sort of depending on the type of business you're in. But for example, you might have an email disclaimer at the bottom of your emails in your as your signature. You might have a referral partner terms and conditions, uh, video usage uh, agreements. I know I always have to sign them for my kids in the school so the school can put their photos on social media, that kind of thing. So you as a business, depending on the nature of your business, might have some of these, all of these, or a whole bunch of different one of these. But you are going to need to keep various copies and as your business evolves, your needs for these particular agreements, policies and terms and conditions are going to evolve and so you're going to create different versions of them. So have them all nicely stored in one easy to manage location. Then you come to your accounts. Now, I'm one of those people that don't particularly like to get my hands dirty with the accounts. I've literally taken on an accountant to do absolutely everything for me from the bookkeeping to basically all of my yearly accounts, everything I don't want to know. The only thing that she does is pretty much at the end of every month as she does a reconciliation on my bank account statement against all the things that I've been spending is that she'll sometimes chase me for like copies of invoices or receipts. So things like Receipt Bank automatically collect a lot of my suppliers and services, their, their invoices automatically, but not every service can be automated in that way. So there is some manual services that I have to go and basically download the PDF of my last transaction or whatever it is and then send it to my client uh, to my accountant so when that happens I need to store this information in a certain place so here is my my folder hierarchy so this is just a couple examples of some suppliers that I might have to go and find documents for manually and then I'll say save them by month so that I can easily get my hands on a specific receipt that I've purchased for something on Amazon and that kind of thing what I've also got going on here is I have a monthly payments tracker. Now this isn't for my accountant, this is for me and my cash flow management. So I actually have a list of all the things that I pay out and the dates that I pay them out on so that I know I've got money in my bank account at the right time, especially as a small business whereby at the moment a lot of what I do is sort of coming in and going out and things are all, you know, I'm, I'm playing with a lot of dates, which is obviously what a lot of small business owners have to work with. So I have like a, just an Excel spreadsheet, a payment tracker that I sort of tick off off um, as things go on so that's what this is for me but I also have my yearly tax documentation and I say that in such a bland way because I really don't want to know about it but I'm, I know my accountant is going to give me copies of the things that they file and I need to keep them safe so that kind of sort of for me goes in these kind of locations I might be running petty cash which I will be very soon when I move into my office in April and um, if I ever have to deal with credit notes to my suppliers and clients and things like that I've got these things going on here now I don't actually have to deal with invoices that much because it's all automated and most of my clients come on contract and if they do buy anything through my website so most of that is set up to automate the invoicing process and send it to automatically to my client so I don't actually have too much manual interference here but I do have to go and collect my own bank statements and that kind of thing so it's handy to have an organizational way of storing all this information and again this stuff is going to update on a monthly basis year by year quarter by quarter so it's handy to sort of basically store it by a year in a yearly fashion Next, you've got HR. Now, again, you might be thinking, I'm a one-person business. Why on earth am I gonna start thinking about HR um, needs? Now, I can't get all of this right on the page, so let's put this down a little bit. Okay, so first of all, you've got your employees, of which you are one of them as your business grows. So you wanna have a folder for your employees, at which point you can put your name in there, even if it's for you having to update your qualifications, maybe they only last for three years and you've got to go do some more accreditation work, that's your professional development. You might wanna set yourself some KPIs for your business so that you can push it to grow, so that you get to a point where you can take on other members of staff. At the moment, when it is just yourself, you're probably not gonna need a lot of this stuff, but as soon as you you start taking on a second or a third employee you're going to need to have contracts you're going to need to organize their time off their sick leave and all that kind of stuff so having a HR resources type file like this per employee will get you nice and sort of your head straight and everything nice and organized for you then what we've got down here is subcontractors um, these are people that might 
not necessarily work for you, but they are contracted to do an element of work for you. So it's, it takes a lot of the, the liabilities and stress away from your business. You're not responsible for them in that way, as long as they are obviously working for more than just you. Um, so you might want to keep their uh, contracts and things to do with them in this particular location as well. And then down here, what we've got is company policies. Now, again, you're not going to need most of this stuff as a one person business, but the moment you take on a second employee, all of this and more is going to be needed. So again, a bit like the legal documents was a food for thought. This is kind of a food for thought as well. So you might need to create yourself a company handbook, at which point there's going to be version one, version two as you update it. Then you've got to have all of these different things in place, like health and safety rules in your office, how your sick pay works, how your holiday system works, any anti-harassment. Now, if it's only me and one other person, there's chances are we're not going to need to necessarily worry about that in the same sense. So some of this stuff does depend on you you as a business and what you you know you're gonna need to think about from the moment you start to grow including how people work with your IT equipment now I'm gonna have to supply laptops and things to my apprentice when she comes on board in April and so therefore she will need I will need as a business owner some sort of policy around how she uses it what happens if she damages it if she runs off with it and I never see it again that kind of stuff so um, even as a small two-person business all of this stuff suddenly starts to become much more powerful and needed by you so let's just minimize that bring that back on screen and now we're going to dive into the IT section now again you probably think well I don't really need much on the IT because it's just me and I use my home Wi-Fi which pretty much is how most sole traders freelancers solopreneurs get started but you might want to make notes for yourself if there's something that you have to find out that you need to do on a regular basis like um, I don't know maybe you need to go in and set up something in, in Microsoft Office 365 admin environment like creating a new email account and it's not something you remember you might want to leave yourself documentation and notes on how to do this so you give your future self a running chance at being able to do this without too much effort for me in my business right now just because I'm about to grow into having an office I've already started to outsource some of this stuff now there is a difference between being able to do something yourself and actually knowing that it's time to pass that task on and delegate it to a power that knows how to do it professionally I did a computing degree I can get my head around all of this stuff but the time it takes me and the time and energy and the stress levels purely because I've got my own client work to be doing in the area that I specialize in there comes a, a, a point in time where I've decided that actually I want to give somebody else this task and I can just go have you done XYZ and they can come back and say yes or discuss it with me but I don't actually have to spend hours implementing whatever that task is myself. So I have an IT department now, a chap that is essentially a third party contractor that's now gonna be handling all of this for me. So if I purchase any software, um, things like my Cover Action Pro, when I wanna create like 3D book images, I can design in Photoshop and run a little button that's gonna turn my little 2D drawing into a 3D book. That's software that I've purchased, so I wanna keep the raw original copy of the files, just in case my computer corrupts, something happens, I don't know, spill coffee on it, and I need to go and buy a new machine, I need to reinstall that software, I need to keep it somewhere so I can access it. So you're still gonna need a lot of this stuff for yourself as well as a one person business. Then we've got the marketing of your business itself. Now again, this is quite a large section and depending on who you are that's watching this, you might find that some of this stuff sort of intermingles between you running your business and you delivering the services. So this gets quite interesting for me because I am obviously a marketing consultant in that sense and I deal with digital marketing on a daily basis as a service I provide my clients. So it really does mean I have to get my head straight in separating my business operations as in managing and marketing my own business from that as a service that I actually deliver to my clients. So what I've got here is a way of sort of breaking this down so that you guys can do something similar. Uh, first of all, whenever I'm trolling the internet and I'm looking for stuff and I come across some sort of lead magnet that I think is really cool um, and I fancy downloading it, I have my swag ideas folder. So that's where all of this like bump that I download lives basically. 
Um, then you've got your general business management itself. So for me, this is the general day-to-day -day maintenance of my social media, my website, my email marketing, expo events, which obviously is not happening at the moment because of COVID, but in due course, they will come back. Networking that I do. So this is like the day-to-day -day management, but then you're gonna run specific campaigns. So maybe you're doing a launch event for something and you wanna run a specific campaign to last 14 days. So you're gonna create a campaign name and put all the files, assets, design files, copy, anything relevant, photos that you take, videos that you make, would go inside that campaign folder so that you can see it, including follow-up statistics and analytics of how well you performed. Okay. Then you've got a sales team. Now, again, obviously when it's just you, it's you, yourself and I, there's not a lot to this. But the reason I have highlighted this here now is that I want you to start thinking about separating your client contracts out so that your sales representative, when you get one eventually, will be able to manage this because their job, that salesperson's job is to bring in clients and customers to your business. They will be handling those contracts getting signed and then they'll need to save and store them. And you don't want your designers or your members, general team, being able to access them, which is why it needs to be separated out. So what I've got going on in the sales department here is all of the things that bring in money to my business. So as a small digital marketer on YouTube, I do actually bring in a small amount of money now through affiliate marketing and also sponsorships. There's a couple of products that I've been given and donated to me as a business so that I can then talk about them on YouTube. So anything that brings in money, I put inside the sales team department at the moment in that sense that's outside of my regular services and products, which is what I'm in business for. So that's where this information here will live. So then finally, we've got this production which for me is the big sort of kahuna as it were for my entire business because um, my entire business is about providing the products and services that allow people to do their own branding, websites, etc. So services, I would literally name service one, service two, service three, and then any files, copy, any information, whether it's going on my website or whatever in the future while I'm working out pricing strategies or dates things are happening, they will live inside each of these folders and these folders themselves will have their own like little mini projects and info structures if that makes sense. Same for the digital products that I create and the physical products as well. This is one of those things whereby these are about me designing my products and services for my business but it's not the delivery of those because the delivery of those actually goes to my clients. So if we come back down now to the client folder itself we would have clients let's say Joe Blogs. Joe Bloggs wants me to design his branding for him, at which point I'm gonna create various assets for him to use. He may send me some sort of uh, images that he's downloaded off the internet, things that, suggestions of color schemes and sort of logos that he likes, so I have a client's folder. Then I'm gonna create artwork using Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, depending on what type of thing I'm designing for him, so I'm gonna have my own design files. Resources, if I'm gonna have used things like Envato stock image or sound effects, if it's YouTube assets that I'm designing for him. And then if there's anything that I'm actually gonna to deliver to my client, I actually call that like my deliverables or finals. It depends what terminology you wanna want, want to use. But every single project is essentially built up of these five key folders. And obviously one project, uh, sorry, one client can have multiple projects. So that's why you list them underneath the client. But it's also the same reason why I have separated out here the client from their contracts because my website developers, graphic designers, programmers, video marketers, videographers, all those kind of things, they, you know, they probably would go and have a good look if they've got chance, but I don't want them being involved in the contract. And realistically, my sales team don't need to worry as long as everything is delivered on time as per the contract and we've all agreed in its uh, sort of design at the time of it being issued then realistically they don't need to have access to all of these project folders as well and all these design files and artwork and stuff. So it's another key reason why to keep these things separate. Even if you're a small one person business at the moment, because of course, there's gonna be a day, hopefully, that you're not gonna be a one person business. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna grow and evolve. At which point, if you've got a system and a setup a bit like this, then you've already got a lot of the hard work basically segmented and your business sort of structured, ready to start thinking about how this now migrates. And that's the exact place that I'm in at the moment as a small business. So I'm just gonna quickly open up my 
files and folders. Let's just. Okay, so what you've got over here, I've just literally uh, had my OneDrive turned off and I haven't yet removed it from the computer because I literally want to be able to show you this on a video today. But as you can see, I've actually had a very similar system going on in place for a long time now. And then obviously there's those things that always sort of run out and have their own sort of rules and regulations that kind of end up being a rule to themselves. But essentially, it's been quite simple for me to actually segment my work and everything that I've done through into this environment and what I've actually got going on now is a SharePoint system whereby I've got different department folders, client folders, marketing project folders and all sorts. Now the reason I wanted to explain this to you today is because I have had some jiggling around and that got me thinking about this process but actually my jiggling around has been quite minimal compared to what it could have been like if I hadn't actually had some, some sort of structure and organisation to begin with and one of the next videos that I will be doing is sort of like an introduction to SharePoint on how that the individual intranets and sites themselves actually can be set up from a project or a department point of view so that a lot of the folder management doesn't just happen like we've just been looking at there but you get other assets and things that you can use and utilize to run that particular project or department as well so that's coming in a future video but one final thing that i want to quickly show you guys whilst i have the chance is um, if we dive back on over onto my left hand monitor, what you can see here is that I've actually got that entire diagram that I've just created and I've built it into a nice downloadable PDF guide for you and that is going to be available to you from my McCall Media Clubhouse. My clubhouse is only just opening up at the moment so there's not a lot in it but you can go and register as a free visitor which will last for infinity so there is absolutely nothing to to pay but when you're in there you can go and get your hands on this downloadable PDF guide and obviously if you keep an eye out on my McCall Media Clubhouse it's very limited on content at the moment because it is something I am literally just launching although it says the 1st of January this does need a little updating but essentially we're getting there now in February 2021 and you'll be able to go in and download this all for yourself totally for free as well as other assets and other useful tools that I will be publishing in the very near future so that's it for me today i hope you found this video useful if you did please give me a thumbs up don't forget to click that bell and subscribe to my channel and the bell to stay notified if you've got any questions or queries put them in the comments below and if not i'll see you on another video real soon